I'm Jen, and today we are going to do a fun practice where we will do some more challenging poses that hopefully the beginning portion of the practice will sort of prep your body for them, and they're never meant to make you feel bad if you can't get into them. I guess the good thing about having them on video is that you can pause and rewind and try, you know, to do it a couple different times, but it's really meant to just bring you into the present moment because you're so focused on what's going on in your body. So it's really not about getting into the perfect pose, but it's nice to have the challenge because that really helps you really hone in on your focus. So to begin, find a comfortable seat, whatever that looks like for you, whether it's cross-legged or with your legs extended or with your back to the wall, if you're at home. And just go ahead and close your eyes and start to do some circles with your shoulders, kind of moving them up, back, and down. Just imagine anything stressful that perhaps you've been carrying around, just getting loosened up. We tend to carry a lot of our stresses there. And then just see what it feels like to have your palms down, your thighs are up. Notice if there's a different place that feels better to you. And I want you to take a really deep breath in through your nose and let it go out through your mouth. Now I want you to continue to connect with your breathing. After your next exhalation, I want you to think about beginning your inhalation by blowing your belly up like a balloon and then broadening into the rib cage. Imagine if you could breathe the whole way up into your sternum, into your chest, and then exhale the whole way back down from the chest through the rib cage, the belly emptying out completely, the exhale being a little bit longer than the inhalation. And do two more like that. Just full belly. Broadening, opening the rib cage, breathing the whole way up into your sternum. And then exhaling the whole way back down. Really get every last little bit of breath out through your lungs. And one last round. Big, full belly breathing. And let it all go. And then perhaps if you'd like to set an intention for your practice today, you take a moment to do that. And go ahead and blink your eyes open. Just shift your way over to all fours and begin to move around a little bit through the spine. Maybe it's a shifting of the hips from side to side. You can play with that or moving through your cats and cows. I always find it really nice to sit back onto my heels with my toes tucked under and get a nice stretch into the toes, into the soles of the feet. And if you have a practice in Ujjayi Pranayama, which is that breath of the ocean, you can begin to do that here, breathing in and out through the nose, kind of making that little sound like you're sighing with your mouth closed, and start to activate that here. And go ahead and press yourself back to downward facing dog. And take a couple of moments just to pedal out through your down dog, press into your hands, see how your toes are feeling, maybe take a moment to flip onto the top of the toes, stretching the front of your foot. And just one more breath here, just kind of seeing how this first downward dog feels. And we're just gonna slowly take our gaze forward and start to walk our way to the top of the mat. So come into your first forward fold, feel free to have a nice generous bend in your knees if your hamstrings are feeling really tight. And just keep your head a little shake, yes and no. Just releasing, again, imagine any tension that you're carrying around on your shoulders and your head, if you could just let that drop. And then come to your halfway lift, and then fold back forward. So twice more like that, just starting to coax the hamstrings awake, and then folding in. Last time here, inhale, lift and lengthen, and exhale, fold forward. Coming with a flat back the whole way up, little bend into the knees as your arms sweep to the sky. Bring your hands to your heart center. I'm gonna turn and face you here. You're gonna take your feet wide off of the mat. Imagine turning your toes out to 10 and two. And then sweep your arms up on an inhalation. And as you exhale, bring yourself down into this goddess malasana shape. 
Press down into your feet. Inhale, rising back up. And as you exhale, pull the hands back in. Belly pulls through to the spine. So one more time, inhaling to draw the arms up and exhaling to come to the space. Pause here and bring your hands to your thighs. And you can use your hands to kind of push back. I just noticed that my heels were a little further in than my knees. So just make sure that you feel stable in your knees. You can kind of shift from side to side. And then I'm gonna turn back around to be at the top of my mat. And then bring your hands down to the earth. You're gonna keep your right foot where it is and then step your left foot back so you come to a little lizard shape. And just take some pulsations here. Draw your chin into your chest and then extend back out. So twice more like this. Pull the belly up and in and extending back out. One more time in this lizard shape with a little pulsation and extend it back out. So make sure that your hands are shoulder width distance. Use your core to pick up your right foot and step it back to plank pose. Press back through the heels, spread your hands wide. Notice if you're sagging, pull your belly up and in. Soften the jaw, soften the eyes. Take one more full breath in your plank. And then slowly lower the whole way down through chaturanga, down to the earth. Flip the feet, press down, rise up, cobra. And then slowly come back down. So take two more like that. Notice if for your shoulders today, maybe having a little wide shoulder cobra feels better. Again, this is your practice and especially practicing at home, hopefully you feel a little more encouraged to do what feels right in your body. And then slowly release. So make your way back to your plank. Press up into your entire body. Reach into the crown, back into the heels, belly up and in, spreading across the upper back. And then exhale up and back, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in here, maybe let it go through the mouth. And then rise up onto the balls of your feet. Take your gaze forward, bend into the knees, and leap to the top of the mat. Lift and lengthen halfway, and exhale, fold forward. Flat back draws you up, reach the fingertips forward and up to the sky, and then bring your hands to your heart center. So you're gonna step wide once again. You can stay at the top of your mat. I'm just doing this so you can see. Inhale, the arms sweep up into the star shape, and then as you exhale, sink down into your malasana, garland pose. Inhale, sweep the arms up, and exhale, sink in. One more time. Inhale, sweep up. I want you to really focus on the soles of your feet. So as you come down, start to plug them in. And again, bring your hands to your thighs. And just kind of move around. See if you can press those hips back a little bit further. See how you're feeling in your hips today. And then you're going to bring your hands back down to the mat. This time the left foot is going to stay where it is. Step your right foot back. So coming into this lizard shape and adding those little pulsations. So pull the belly up and in, rounding the spine and extending back out. So you can close your eyes if that feels good to you. Just each time you deepen a little bit further into the left hip. And then go ahead and step your left foot back. Come to find your plank pose. Shoulders are stacking right over the wrist, pressing back through the heels, belly up and in. And then slowly lower, chaturanga, pause in chaturanga, and then pull yourself through to upward facing dog. Now from here, tuck your toes under, pull your belly up, go back to chaturanga, and then press up to plank pose. Draw the hips up and back, downward facing dog. So from here, we're going to send the right leg to the sky. Sweep it on up. And as you exhale, pull your knee to your right tricep. So sort of as if you were gonna step back to that lizard. Inhale, sweep the right leg back up. 
and exhale, pull it up to the right tricep. One more time, inhale, sweep it up, and then take it to the right tricep. Pause here for a moment, hug it through center, pull the belly up and in, and step your foot the whole way through. So from here, you're gonna plant your left heel down for warrior one. Take a moment to make sure your right hip isn't out, hug it under. Press down to the feet, and then slowly begin to rise up into your warrior one. Really ignite your left glute. That's gonna help you draw that left hip point forward. And then same idea, kind of shrugging through the shoulders here. You can take these full circles through the shoulders. And again, imagine any kind of tension or stress that you hold in the shoulders, just untangling knots. Just take five full circles through your shoulders. Don't lose the connection with your breath. And then the next time your hands come down, take them the whole way down to the mat. Pick up your right foot, take it back to plank. Exhale to come to chaturanga, pause there. Pull yourself through to upward facing dog. You can continue with the challenge of tucking the toes under, go back to chaturanga, press up through plank, draw the hips up and back. Keep the belly completely awake during that little sequence. Left leg sweeps. Exhale, take it to the left tricep. Squeeze out the breath and then take it back up to the sky. So we're just warming the body, prepping it for these poses that we're going to play with. One more time, left leg sweeps. Take it to the left tricep and pause for a moment. Scoop the belly as you pull the knee into center and step the whole way through. Second side, warrior one. Plant that right heel down. Make sure your left hip isn't swaying out and draw yourself up. So once you've found that place to land, settle your gaze, and begin to open up into the shoulders. So again, we're just kind of taking these nice little circles through the shoulders. This isn't something that you do in your everyday movements. So just using the full scope of the shoulder circling through. And after your fifth round, go ahead and bring your hands down. Step your way back to the plank. So slowly lowering, chaturanga. Come to your upward facing dog. Use your belly to pull yourself up back to chaturanga and to plank, or I'm sorry, to downward facing dog. So now taking the right leg back up to the sky. We're just gonna step that right foot the whole way through. Come back to your warrior one, inhaling, arms rise up. Now, as you circle back this time, go ahead and interlace your fingers. Squeeze your shoulder blades onto your back. So remember we talked about the hip hugging under warrior one. So now we're going to humble warrior, but as you fold forward, don't let your hip sway out to the side. So you wanna keep hugging your hip in as you fold forward. As you inhale, rise back up, hug the shoulder blades and press your fist back towards your left heel without splaying the rib cage open. So exhale, fold forward once again, back foot is steady into the ground. Inhale to rise back up, squeeze the shoulder blades onto the back. Exhale, fold forward. And this time as you inhale, come the whole way back up Release your arms to the sky. Take that full circle through the shoulders and bring your hands down. So these in-between flows can be whatever you want them to be, right? You can take a child's pose. You could skip chaturanga. You can go straight to down dog. Or you can keep adding in this extra chaturanga challenge if that's how you're feeling today. But remember, every time you roll out the mat, you're different. So allow that to be seen in your practice. So sending your left leg to the sky and stepping the whole way through. So coming back to warrior one on this side, rise up, hugging your left hip under, circle the arms back, 
When you go to interlace, kind of put the other finger slot down where it feels kind of funky. Squeeze the shoulder blades, root into the right foot and start to pour yourself forward. Remember that left hip is going to want to swing out. Hug it back under, rise back up. Back foot is anchoring down and fold forward. So really focusing on hip opening here. One more time, rising up and exhale, fold forward. As you inhale, come back up, release your arms to the sky, take that full circle through the shoulders, hands come down to the earth. Take your connecting flow. What I always like to say in my classes, don't let this flow be like when you fast forward the commercials, when you've recorded something on your DVR. Where you disconnect and it's like, okay, now what's next? Can you stay just as present in these in-between flows? Take a deep breath in through your nose and let it go. Go ahead and send your right leg to the sky. And then pull the knee to the nose and step through. Plant the back heel down. Rise on up to your warrior one. Circle the hands back, interlace your fingers, and fold forward on your exhalation. Now, as you inhale, come to where your torso is parallel to the earth. Imagine as you squeeze your hands together, you're like drawing back on a bow. Crown of the head is the arrow. And then bending into that right leg, lifting up into your warrior three. And then bend the knee, step back, Draw yourself back up, lift the heart. So exhale, fold forward once again, side of that right leg. Come back up, draw back on your bow. Lean into that right foot, pull the belly up and in, lifting, warrior three. Step back again, heart opening, warrior one. Squeeze the shoulder blades. Exhale, humble warrior, fold forward. Last time here, come to that halfway point, squeeze the shoulder blades onto the back, rise up into your warrior three. As you step back, warrior one, free the arms, full circle through the shoulders, hands to the earth. So take that connecting flow, that makes sense. See if you can slow your breath down Returning to Downward Facing Dog. Close your eyes. Take a moment to notice the difference in the right and left side of your body. Wait for your next inhalation and then send your left leg to the sky. As you exhale, step through, plant down, warrior one, rise on up. So remember, you can take that kind of opposite thumb on top, interlace, squeeze the shoulder blades onto the back, fold forward inside of that left leg. And then again, come up, look forward, see where you're going, and then leap up into warrior three. Step back, take a moment to peel another layer off, open the heart. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come to that halfway point, see where you're going, and lift up into warrior three. Last time, step back knowing that your balance is going to be different on both sides. Exhale, fold forward. Rise up and prepare. Anchor down and lift into your warrior three. Step back, release the arms, full circle, reach back, hands come to the earth. You will meet in down dog. If it feels like these flows kind of clean the slate for you, then take them. If they feel like they're using up energy that you don't have, then don't give them. 
The next time you come to down dog, go ahead and lower your knees. Come back to child's pose. Bring your arms down by your sides. Let your forehead rest. And then maybe iron out the forehead. Take a moment to notice how you feel. Mind, body here. Maybe a little more present. Maybe a little less scattered. Or maybe none of those things. Yoga is a personal journey. So see how you feel here. We're gonna take that flow into one breath per movement. And the idea behind that is for a little moving meditation. So go ahead and draw yourself back up, coming to downward facing dog. If you have an intention that you're working with, feel free to bring that back into your mind. Inhale, your right leg sweeps to the sky. Exhale, step through. We're really going to focus on the breath here. Take the entire inhalation to rise up. The entire inhalation to reach back, interlace, and fold forward. The entire inhalation to prepare for warrior three. And then exhale to lift up. The inhale takes you the whole way back to the start. Warrior one, circle your arms the whole way down through Chaturanga as you exhale. Making your way through the flow that serves you and returning to downward facing dog. Inhale, the left leg follows. Exhale, step through. Pulling that back foot down, sweep arm up. Interlace, see if you can find the funky grip, fold in. Take a full inhalation, prepare, full exhalation to rise. Inhale to step back, sweep the arms up, circle the hands down. Your path. Turn to down dog. We're going to take one more. I'm not going to talk quite as much. I'll be here for you visually. Really see if you can follow your breathing. When you've concluded that last round, find child's pose or perhaps seated, whatever feels good in your body. And breathe here. So again, if it feels better for you, you just come and have a seat. So normally I play music in my classes. So if you're interested, and having a little music in the background, you can follow me on Spotify. Or perhaps practicing without music works better for you. Just take a moment to observe. See how you feel compared to when you first sat on your mat. Maybe you're feeling a little more awake, a little more alive. 
And then from wherever you are, we're gonna make our way onto our backs. So finding your way down, hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze. Just rock from side to side, iron out the low back. So we're gonna go into a little core work. So you're gonna bring the soles of your feet together and your knees apart. Bring your hands to cradle your head and make sure as you do this that you're not using your hands to push your head forward, but you're really letting your head rest back into your hands so you're not creating any tension in your spine. Now, as you inhale, you're gonna bring your legs together, straighten them long. And then as you exhale, come back to that Baddha shape. Lift the shoulders, the head, bring the knees as close as you can to your triceps. And then inhale to press long. Exhale, draw it back in. It's kind of like closing a clamshell, I would think. And then inhale, press it back out. So the legs could be at like a 45 degree angle. And if this is too intense for you, you can keep the legs in this shape and just lower and lift them in this manner. So totally up to you what makes more sense in your body. So we're really beginning to feel a little trembling, a little shaking, a little heat in the abdominals. Notice where you hold your tension. I tend to clench my jaw. So see if you can Soften your jaw, or maybe you squeeze up your eyes or your brow. And then remember in the beginning, and we were doing that full belly breathing, see if you can continue to let the breath be really long. So this movement's really slow. A lot of times in gym classes, right, we do this core work, it's really fast. But when we do really slow core work, we get a lot deeper, we're much more in tune to what's happening in our body. So two more, let's move nice and slow. Exhaling to draw in and inhaling to reach long. So the next time that you draw the knees in, we're gonna pause here. See if you can bring your triceps to find your knees or your shins. Imagine now that you could push your hands up onto the ceiling. Pull your heels down towards your booty. And as you do, lift the shoulder blades up so this is a reclined crow pose right here. Notice how much core it takes to be here. One more breath. And then go ahead and release. Stretch out your arms, stretch out your legs. Splay your rib cage open, kind of breathe here. Let that nice big arch in the back happen, big air pocket lifting up beneath you. And then bring your arms down by your sides, plant your feet right beneath your sits bones and coming into a nice counter pose into a bridge. So pressing into the feet, imagine you have a block between your inner thighs as you press down, lift up. And just take a moment, maybe tucking the shoulder heads under and interlacing the fingers, finding that same shape you were in. Notice if your knees are splaying out, hug them back in, press into the feet. So giving the body the reverse of that abdominal work we just did. And then go ahead and release it. Start to lower yourself down one vertebra at a time. And just windshield wiper your legs from side to side. A few more times, just giving a little bit of release. And then go ahead and hug your knees into your chest. So from here, you're going to cross one ankle on top of the other. Bring your hands beneath your thighs. So I want you to begin to rock and roll forward and back. So we're gonna play with hopping back to Chaturanga from here. So we really just woke up the core and that's what it's gonna to take to lift up and shoot ourselves back to Chaturanga, which will help us later when we're in crow pose and we're playing with shooting back there. So you can watch, I'm gonna roll over, lift up, shoot it back, land. So you can play with that again. You can pause the video, try it a couple different times. Really need to use the core to get there. 
So take a deep breath here in your down dog. And then feel that same activation of where we were getting all of this heat. Rise up onto the balls of your feet. Bend your knees. Sometimes it's even helpful to bend your elbows like a crouching tiger. And then you're going to hop to the top of the mat. Lift and lengthen halfway. And exhale, fold forward. Bend into the knees, come the whole way up to standing, sweeping your arms to the sky. And then gather your hands to your heart center. So you can stay where you are at the top of the mat. I'm gonna turn and face. And then from here, wherever it makes sense with your hands, whether it's here, hands at the hips, that gives you more balance. So I like to put my hands on my hips. So you're gonna bring your weight over into your left, or I'm sorry, your right foot. You're going to pull your left knee up and just start to find that place where you can just be balanced. And then we're going to begin to play with our balance, but I want you to remember all of this that we just woke up. Keep it awake and start to circle around through the hip. So we're going to take three of these hip joint circles. And again, you fall down, no big deal. Just get back up. It's seriously not a big deal. We're too hard on ourselves too much. So the next time that your knee comes around, you're gonna take that same pathway out to the side, but you're gonna pause. Bring your hand to find your knee. Maybe you reach your arm in front and find your shin, and then pull the knee up a little higher. Reach into the crown of the head, bringing awareness to the entire body. So one more breath here, and then we're gonna lower the foot down Step wide. We're going to come back into that malasana. But this time we're going to come low and come the whole way down. So once you come here, you're going to feel the tendency to kind of let everything drop out. So I want you to lift up. And remember how much energy it takes, and you can even practice this, to push up and bring your arms to the sky. So we're going to play with what's called funky birds of paradise. So you're going to play with bringing your left arm in front of your left shin and your right arm to the sky. This might be plenty for you to just be here, play with some of these movements. Maybe you sweep your arm behind your back. This is where a strap can come in really handy. Your left arm is gonna reach back and find your right. And you could play with just being here in a little twist. Now, if you wanna play with coming into the Spunky Birds of Paradise, you're going to start to shimmy that right foot so it's underneath your hip. Start to lean over into the right foot, lift the hips, but squeeze that left leg in as you slowly come up. So sort of in that shape we had just found. See how much length you can find in your spine? Sometimes we really round here. So one more breath. And then go ahead and lower that foot back down to the earth. Go through the same channels. And then bring your hand down. Lift up, turn your toes in. And just come to a forward fold. Just bend one knee at a time, kind of sway. You can let the arms kind of sway. Maybe take a deep breath in, deep breath out. And then heel toe your feet back together. And come up with a nice flat, strong back, sweeping your arms to the sky. Bring your hands to your heart center. So this time we're gonna shift over into the left foot. So again, just see where it works for you to have your hands for balance. Find something steady to look at and then pull the right knee up. So you can see that my foot's in flexion, my toes were spread. So the foot is part of this movement. It's not just kind of hanging out there. And then again, we woke up this giant place of strength. So stay connected to that as we circle through. So take three rounds of circling around through the hip. And now you kind of know where we're going. So as you take the leg out to the side and pause, you can kind of imagine that funky birds of paradise here. So we have the leg where it needs to be. Maybe you bring your hand in front, see what that feels like, this connection. So one more breath. 
And then go ahead and step it wide. Toes are sort of like 10 and two. Sweep your arms up. And then come back down into that shape. So again, the tendency is to almost go sit the whole way down to the ground. So press into your feet, feel that rising. And then you're gonna draw your right arm forward in front of your right leg, left arm to the sky, reaching back, maybe coming and finding that embrace. And again, straps great here. You don't have to have a yoga strap. It could be a towel, just something where you can connect. So you could stay here in this twist. There's always a place for everyone to rest, not rest, to land in these poses. And then bring that left foot over. So start to lean into that, hug the right leg in, and slowly begin to rise. It's fun to do this while you're talking. So here, nice pop. And then step back, come back down. And sometimes you fail, and that's perfectly fine. Bring your hands down, lift your hips, and just bend from side to side. It's always good to have something to work towards, to play with, something that humbles you, lets you fall down. So I'm gonna turn myself back around to the front of the mat, because now we're gonna play with crow pose, where we just were on our backs. So I want you to heel toe your feet together, rise up onto the balls of your feet, and come down. So take the knees apart, just like we had that Baddha shape, that butterfly shape, right, on our backs. So planting the hands here, and you're gonna shift the triceps underneath the shins. So the hands are connecting to the ground. They're not just there hanging out, they're not just pressing into the heels of your hands. So right now you can see that I'm not using my core. If I were to lean in, I'm asking my arms to do all the work. So I want you to fire up the belly, pull the navel up and in, and always gaze forward. Don't look down, because that's gonna bring you to flip over. So look forward, and again, a crash pad or a pillow right here is helpful if you're scared of falling forward. Lean in, and then remember how we hug the heels up towards the glute, pressing up, so you can see how much I'm pressing my back up to the sky. So I have all of this height. And remember when we were rolling into Chaturanga from our back. So here you could play with on an exhalation, shoot it back to Chaturanga. Lifting to up dog and exhaling back. Downward facing dog. So again, you can play with that. Press pause, do it a few more times to see how it feels. And then lower your knees down, come to your child's pose. Take a moment to absorb it, iron out the forehead, or you connect with your breath. And we'll slowly make our way back up and shifting back. Down dog. I'm actually going to turn around for this portion. You can see I'm a very professional videographer. <laughs> so from here, you're going to sweep your right leg to the sky. Go ahead and bend your knee and open up your hip. Just let it be nice and free. Keep pressing into your right hand so you're not leaning over like flipping your dog, but you still have the rooting of the hands. Just giving a little bit of freedom here. You can circle around through the hip. And then pull the knee to center. Step your right foot the whole way through. So we're gonna plant the back heel down for warrior two. Draw yourself up and take a moment to land. So you should see a straight line from your right heel to the center of your left arch, arms in the same plane. Just really rooting down and really be soft in your joints, soft in the elbows. Don't like reach out like a soldier statue. Just let it be a little bit soft here. And then you're gonna flip your right palm, go back to reverse warrior. Take your left arm behind you and stretch back. And then you're gonna pull that right arm in a full circle, free your left arm, bring your forearm to your thigh. Sweep your left arm the whole way around. Take it down, flip the right palm, tuck that left arm back, go back to your reverse. 
And then again, coming through, free that left arm, come the whole way up and around. So one more time, sweeping back, tuck the hand behind you, and then coming forward, sweeping that left arm up. So now we're gonna play with traditional Birds of Paradise. But first we're gonna come into this side angle pose. So take the left arm where it's been already, tuck it behind the back, and then take your right hand and just shift it so you're touching the bottom of your thigh. And so notice how the head is still in the same line as the hip, as the knee, as the ankle. So maybe you can find the fingertips here without destroying that alignment. If not, find a strap. So take a few moments here. Notice if all of your weight is forward in your right foot, press back into the left foot, reach into the crown of the head. So take another breath here. Now we're gonna play with Birds of Paradise. So you're gonna to start to take your gaze down to your right foot and I'm gonna shift so you can see it from facing forward. And you're gonna use your belly to step your left foot up. So we're in that similar shape, but now the arm's behind the leg instead of in front of it. So wade into that left foot, hug that right leg up, and then start to find that rising action. So again, a lot of time in Birds of Paradise, we see a rounded spine. I want you to think about cobra or up dog in the chest. Maybe you play with extending the leg. Okay, totally up to you. Total connection between your right arm and your right leg. Lower the foot, slowly lower it down. And then you're gonna step your left foot back, turn yourself back open in your side angle, and then unravel, straighten your right leg, and draw yourself up and back to a reverse triangle pose. Just breathe here. And then you're gonna bend your right knee, come back out to warrior two. Bring your hands to your hips. Straighten your right leg. Turn your right toes forward. You're gonna hinge from the hip, slowly fold forward into Prasarita Pado Tanasana. Bring your hands to the earth. As you inhale, lift and lengthen the spine. And then exhale, fold forward. Take two more like that. We're gonna play with this really funky pose. I think it's called super soldier, but I think of it as like an upside down sundial. So from here, what we're gonna do is come back to that Malasana shape. So you're gonna draw your heels in, turn your toes out, and start to sit back. So this is one that you'll probably really wanna rewind a couple of times. So you're gonna take your right arm and tuck it under your right leg. It's not gonna stay there long. The weight is gonna be in your right foot and your left hand, okay? So start to bring the weight over into your right foot and then you're gonna lift that left leg up, bring your heel towards your glute. Your right hand reaches back, maybe you find the sole of the foot, but the action here in that knee is that hip joint circle that we did standing. So maybe that right hand finds the left foot, and you can play with even peeking up and underneath that left shoulder. So I'll show you again. You're tucking that right arm under. It's there temporarily. The weight is into the right foot, the left hand. You're gonna take your left heel, bring it to your glute. Bring your right hand to find the foot and then think of that hip joint circle, peel it out, up and back. And then maybe taking your gaze up. And then go ahead and release it. Step nice and wide. Come back out into that prasarita. And then you can turn your toes and just kind of shift. 
from side to side. Whatever feels good, maybe it's sweeping the arms, maybe it's going into like a skandasana flow. Whatever feels good to you here. And then we're gonna pivot back around to the top of the mat, find your lunge, and then take a flow. Maybe be moving the whole way through that flow with a double chaturanga. Or maybe you skip it and find yourself in a child's pose. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. So second side, left leg sweeps to the sky. Go ahead and bend your knee, open up your hip. Enjoy a little bit of freedom there. And you're gonna step your left foot the whole way through. Plant that back heel down for warrior two and rise up while I have a hair break. Again, not a very professional filming here. We'll get there. So make your way to warrior two. And just take a minute to find yourself steady because you know we're gonna be moving. And again, you never wanna lock out these elbows. Just let them sort of extend naturally. So flip the left palm, bring that right hand behind you, coming to reverse. And then take that left arm the whole way across. Free the right arm, come forward, side angle pose. Maybe you watch your hands as you move through here. Just another tool to bring yourself into the present moment. See if you can slow your breathing down. Maybe you've disconnected from it. Come back as you tuck that right arm back, left arm sweeps. And then coming forward to that side angle pose. So notice that my head is not here, right? There's still a straight line from the crown, shoulder, hip, ankle. As a teacher, I see all the time this. Right, so at home, I want you to be really aware of where your body is in space. I, for example, have a, sh a shadow where I can see where I am. So tuck your right hand behind. Maybe just play with bringing your hand under your thigh so you can see this straight line. Maybe you have a strap and you tuck under. Maybe you're able to find the fingers. And again, making sure that you're not coming forward and shooting your hip out back behind you. It's gonna create some pain in the low back. I wanna be really careful here. So, playing with our second side of Birds of Paradise. So again, I'm gonna shift around. And I realized I did the wrong leg the first time, so I wasn't near you guys. That might've been confusing. This time we'll get it together. So you're gonna step your right foot up. And make sure that you have your right foot directly under your hip. And then as you press, remember how much energy it took to press up when we were in Malasana, start to pull the left knee up. And again, often I see a tendency here to round the spine. So think about cobra or up dog in your chest. And as much energy as you can press out into your left foot. Beautiful. And then slowly bring it down. I ended up doing the wrong way, I think, for you guys, but that's okay. <laughs> and then go ahead, step back, find that side angle pose for a moment, and then release it, straighten your left leg, and come up and back to that reverse triangle. Stretch into the side waist. You can always oscillate the head. Find those ways that you can counter any intensity that you were just experiencing. And then come back to your warrior two. Bring your hands to your hips, straighten your left leg, pivot. So prasarita, come forward. So this is like a straddle forward fold. And just let your head hang heavy for a moment. Shake it yes and no. We're gonna play with that challenge pose again. So you're gonna to start to heel toe your feet in a little bit to that malasana shape. So we're gonna tuck 
the left arm under. Remember, this is just temporary, so don't be worried about how deep you're getting your shoulder. It's just temporary here. The weight is gonna be in to the left foot and into the right hand. So as you lean over into the left foot, you're gonna bend your right knee and draw your heel to your glute. So here's the first stage. Maybe you hang out here. Maybe you release your left hand, find the foot, and again, you can play with that hip joint circle. Knee goes out, up, and back. And then maybe look up underneath your armpit. So I'll show it to you again. It's kind of funky. You're gonna tuck the left hand under. The weight's gonna be in the right hand and into the left foot. As you draw your weight over into your left foot, bend your right knee, bring your heel up. So don't forget about how important your right hand is. Let the weight be equal between the hand and the foot. The left hand reaches for the foot and you do that hip joint circle out, up, and back. And then maybe peek up underneath that left sh right shoulder, sorry. And then go ahead and release. Step wide and just find what feels good in your body. If you're feeling really frustrated, that's perfectly fine, but don't get stuck there, right? These poses aren't meant to always be super easy, but yoga is a journey of the self. So we wanna notice what we get really upset about and what we get really bummed out about in our practice when it really isn't that important and why we hang on to it. So those some scars, those patterns, and if they're worthy of us holding on to. So once you feel like you've kind of released all of that, go ahead and come back to the top of the mat, step it back. Slowly take that last flow, moving through chaturanga, dog, back to chaturanga, make your way back to down dog, sweep your right leg to the sky. And go ahead and bring your right leg the whole way in for pigeon. So taking the knee out towards the right wrist. So take a moment, look behind you, even if you've done this a million times, look behind you, make sure your left leg is straight. Tuck your left toes under, and then think about isometrically dragging your left toes toward your body. What that's gonna do is draw your right hip back. So you kind of get in line. So you can play with any version of pigeon that you like. If you wanna to come to your sleeping pigeon, we're gonna play with a little funky twisted quad opening pigeon. So from here, you're gonna thread your left arm underneath your right. And again, just notice that this is okay in your low back. If it feels all right, you can come down into this twist. And maybe this is plenty for you. If you get here and there's too much tugging or there's too much in the low back, then bring yourself back to your traditional kind of sleeping pigeon. So if this feels okay, another added benefit to get into the quad is you can bend your left knee, reach back with your right hand, and then draw that heel to the glute. So it's gonna get really deep into that left quad and hip flexor. So you can kind of play with that and see how it feels. And just close your eyes, find your breath, see if you can soften your jaw. And again, if you have this back foot, if it's too intense, feel free to release it. If the head isn't touching the ground, you always wanna make sure that you have the support for your head. It's like 12 to 15 pounds. So maybe a blanket there or a block if the head isn't touching the ground. So one more breath here. If you have that back foot, go ahead and release it. And then we're gonna slowly bring ourselves up. Sweep that left arm out. You can take it up to the sky if that feels good. And then we're gonna pick up the left knee, send the right leg to the sky. And then come into a little heart opener as you bend the knee, open the hip, plant your right foot and flip the dog up and over. And then as you come back around, bring that right leg up to the sky, 
and lower it down. So second side, and I should have said this on the first side, but if pigeon isn't your jam, you can always do a figure four on your back or you could do any other hip opening that feels right for you. So as we set up, look behind you, make sure the right leg is straight. And as the toes are tucked under, drag them forward isometrically. And you'll notice if you're really pulling the right toes forward isometrically, that your left hip is gonna come back. So you could come into that traditional sleeping pigeon if you like, or if you took the twist in the quad opener on the first side, we'll do it second side. So bring that right arm through and let your head rest. And again, if the head isn't resting, find something to put underneath it so you have some support. And from here, we bend the right knee, reach back with the left hand. So you want to make sure that your heel's coming, your right heel's coming straight into your right glute. And anytime that you're doing a stretch into the quad, you want to make sure that your foot is awake so that your knee is supported. So when the foot's in flexion, it's firing up all the muscles around the knee. So you don't ever want to feel anything in your knee. So softening the face. And imagine just breathing into these muscles, just softening into them, not forcing them open, just slowly. Go ahead and release that leg. Draw yourself up. Maybe sweep that arm up. Bring your hands down. And again, if you took that flip of the dog on the first side, go ahead and sweep it up. Bend your knee, open up your hip, and then slowly flip it over. And then come back around. Go ahead and lower your knees down to the earth. Walk your hands towards the top of the mat for Anahatasana. So the forehead comes to the ground. You're really open and the sternum finds the earth and you can bring your chin down, up, totally up to you. And then slowly roll yourself out onto your belly. And just roll over onto your back, hug your knees into your chest. So as we come down and prepare for Shavasana, if you have anything to keep you warm or an eye pillow or you want to turn off your lights or whatever that may be, just take a couple more moments here, finding happy baby and just kind of be really mobile in it. Just move the arm or the legs around, roll on the low back. Bring the soles of your feet together, maybe play with finding that Vatakanasan shape. Maybe catch your heels and move out into a little straddle. See what feels good here in your body. And then hug your knees into your chest. Take your legs up to the sky. And this can be where you stay if you are not going to do a shoulder stand or you have some issues in your neck. If you've never done shoulder stand, don't do it right now because I'm not teaching it to you. So those of you who are familiar with shoulder stand, go ahead and rise up into it. And when I teach shoulder stand, I always like to say, you don't want to see your thighs. So your legs shouldn't be here, right? All of the weight of the leg should be going straight down into the shoulder girdle pressing the back of the head. You could find those same shapes. Maybe bringing the soles of the feet together. You could play with some circling around through the hips. Or you can keep the legs up. But take like five to seven breaths with the legs up in the sky. Just letting everything be kind of opposite of what we're normally used to. And swing the feet up and over into plow pose. Let your hands come down to rest. And then slowly coming down. Planting one vertebra at a time. So you land the feet down to the earth. Take your arms out to a T. Scoot your hips to the right. Let your knees drift to the left. And just turn your head to the right. So 
but we've moved our body into a lot of ways that perhaps you wouldn't have moved it today. So just have gratitude for the fact that you have a body that allows you to try new things, that gets you places, instead of focusing on the negative. When you're ready, bring yourself back through center, shift your hips a little to the left, your knees to the right, let your head drift to the left and close your eyes. And always be really mindful in these twists that you're not pushing too far. It's just a little bit of a twist in the spine. And again, gratitude for your body, gratitude for this time that you've taken. Focus on the good. And then come back through center, hug your knees into your chest. Go ahead and straighten out your legs coming into Shavasana. Feel free to put your legs at the wall if you're at home and have a place where you can do that. And once you come down into Shavasana, I want you to take three deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. Just completely emptying out on the exhalation and filling up completely on the inhalation. Let your body really soften here. Your shoulders, your arms, your fingers, your hands, your legs, your feet, your toes. And then moving the whole way back up the length of the body to your face, your jaw, your eyes, the crown of your head. Allow yourself to just float on the waves of your breath. Softening each part of you. Stay here for at least five minutes, if not longer. Thank you so much for watching today. Namaste.